During the most recent Apple event where the iPhone 15 was launched, no one was really surprised that USB-C would be coming to the iPhone. However, for us video creators out here, we were all pleasantly surprised by the fact that you could use that USB Type-C port to record directly to an SSD, not only in third-party apps, but the native iOS one. Although Android users have had this feature for many years, iPhone users can now rejoice. <laughs> In this video, we're going to go through all the pros and cons, when you should use it, when you might not want to. First, we're going to start with how to set it up. Let's talk hardware. So for bare necessities, all you need is a USB Type-C cable and an SSD. Now, any brand and model will pretty much work. You just want to make sure that the read and write speeds are pretty solid. Honestly, anything that is available nowadays is probably going to do you just fine. For example, the drives that I've been testing the past month are the Samsung T3, T5, T7 Shield, and the Angelbird Pocket to Go. But I've also seen other creators like my friend David, who made a whole video just about how you can record straight to an SD card using Apple's adapter. But that also gets us into the issue of your drive then just hanging there or you trying to hold both the drive and your phone at the same time. You can pick from a wide range of accessories like the Beast Grip Pro, this grip case that me and my friend made, or just clamps and adapters. But once you have your physical setup, now it's time to jump into the apps. So let's start with the native iOS app, open it up, make sure you're in the video mode and make sure ProRes log is turned on and automatically you should see USB-C at the bottom. This means when you hit record, every video file is gonna be recorded straight onto the hard drive. I've gotten a lot of comments in the past, but no, it's only with the ProRes mode. Of course, third-party apps are beginning to support these modes as well. The most popular one is the new Blackmagic camera app. Here, you're just gonna to wanna to jump into your settings, scroll down until you see Save Clips 2, and here you'll have three different options. One is in-app only, where it will just save it to the Blackmagic Camera app, in-app and photos only, which I kind of wish this was split into two different modes because I don't know why you'd want to take up twice the amount of storage and save them in two places on the same device. If anyone has a good reason for this, please let me know down in the comments below. And the third option, which is the one we're looking for, is to save it through the Files app. So here you're going to click Files and you're going to navigate to the main Files section where you will see your external hard drive. Now the benefit to using this over the native iOS app is in the native iOS app, it just creates a DCIM folder. And so there's not a whole lot of organizational options. Whereas in the Blackmagic Camera app, because you're picking specifically which folder you save it in, in theory, if you were filming an entire project, you can make a folder for scene one, scene two, and so on and so forth. And each time changing the folder you're actually recording to. So then when you get home and plug the drive into your computer, your footage is already organized. I do just want to point out in previous versions of the Blackmagic Camera app, I was having this weird bug where ProRes LT and HQ, it would drop frames so it would stop recording after 10 or 15 seconds. So hopefully it was just a bug, but either way, make sure you are updated to the latest version of the app. So now let's talk about situations where you would primarily just record into the phone's internal storage. For me, one of the biggest reasons is you want the footage to stay on your phone. Yes, you may want to share it to your computer and make other videos with it, but at the end of the day, if you want to be able to easily recall the clips on your phone, then record into the Photos app. Or if you're just gonna be editing the videos on your phone, you can keep it all there. It's great if you're trying to keep the workflows really tight and simple. Of course, another reason is you have ample storage space. For those of you with 512 or one terabyte of storage, you can record quite a bit of ProRes footage before you really gotta start worrying about offloading or uploading to some cloud. Or if you don't mind using a third-party app that's going to give you the extra features that the native iOS app won't, like 4K 60fps, then you can pretty much have all the features that you would with an SSD. Another question I've been getting a ton of lately is, do you have to shoot ProRes in order to get log? And the answer is no, if you're using the Blackmagic camera app. Although you're not going to get the level of detail and the really high bit rates, if you are a fan of the smaller file sizes and compression rates of H.265, but you still wanna give yourself 10-bit color clips that you can color grade and stylize a bit more, you still can shoot log. 
But in the native iOS app, you cannot do this. If you want log, you have to be shooting in ProRes. So now let's talk about some situations where the SSD would be extremely beneficial. For those of you who love the native iOS app for its ease of use and you want 4K60, Apple says you need an SSD. The flip side of the point we talked about earlier, where if you don't want to keep these clips on your phone for a long period of time, if you record it straight to a drive, you're going to bypass that entire annoying workflow of transferring stuff off your phone and then remembering to go back and find the clips you used and delete them before all your storage fills up. Shooting onto an SSD is gonna make this workflow way more seamless. One of the biggest situations where an SSD would be beneficial is if you were gonna be handing that footage off to someone else. During the event, they really showed off Olivia Rodrigo's new music video, which was entirely shot on the iPhone 15 Pro. And we can see a little bit of behind the scenes footage here, the cameras in multiple different types of rigs. It's passed off from person to person and I'm certain that this wasn't the director's personal device. And so if you are using your phone in a production, but you don't want to then hand over your phone to have someone connect to a computer and all your photos and messages and all your personal stuff pops up, it makes the most sense to put it onto an SSD drive that you can then disconnect from your phone, hand that off with just the footage on it, and treat it kind of like a normal DIT workflow. This also brings up an excellent point around the stigma of filming with a phone in a professional environment. As I've been making these videos, and I think as I've watched other people, we all share the same agreement that the iPhone has come so far, and phones in general have come so far in what they're able to capture both with photography and filmmaking. But unfortunately, no matter how much I could shoot a whole wedding, shoot a whole event, make a commercial, do whatever on an iPhone. If I were to arrive on a set with just my iPhone and go, I'm ready to go, you'd probably be fired or at least get very weird looks from everyone else. And I think that's why a lot of mobile filmmakers, myself included, will try to build up our rigs, no different than the DSLR and mirrorless days where we all tried to attach as many accessories as possible, is because we're all trying to emulate the look of Hollywood cinema cameras, partially so that we're just taken serious. Roger Deakins could show up with his iPhone, and if you didn't know who he was, he'd be like, Wow, this is gonna be a terrible looking video. I've said it in every previous video, I don't think this is gonna replace everyone's A camera anytime soon, but being a B camera, a BTS camera, a crash cam, or just a camera that can fit in places that most other cameras can't, is going to add a lot of benefit to many productions. And regardless of if you are a professional or just filming a bunch of personal videos, the other big benefit to an SSD is it can keep you from having to buy the higher storage capacity iPhone. So anyone out there with a 128 gig or 256 now doesn't necessarily have to worry about constantly filling up their phone. The first year that ProRes came out, I was in Seattle, and then I went to Israel last year, and each time I easily filled up my one terabyte iPhone, filming over 800 gigs of ProRes footage without really even trying. And so I can only imagine someone with 128 gig or 256 with maybe 30 minutes of record time in ProRes HQ. So the fact that you can connect a one, two, four terabyte SSD and essentially have unlimited storage is really amazing. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and get subscribed. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.